Check out monorail.com, America's affordable investment app made for conservatives who want to keep their hard-earned money with companies that share their value. Download the Monorail app today. Join Monorail. Well, hello, y'all. Dennis Prager here. I... (laughs) I was going to say I have bad news and I have good news. Added the usual, which would you rather hear first? Most people choose the bad news because they can't enjoy the good news if they're in suspense about what the bad news is. But I don't... (laughs) The problem is that I have bad news. (laughs) And I'm laughing because I prefer to laugh than to cry. And please understand, we did not lose yet. The sober, the decent... The rational, the happy have not yet lost to the left. Look at look at Florida. He wrote a piece, Ron DeSantis did, for the Wall Street Journal about taking on Disney. This man is the real deal. He's not the only real deal. And I'm happy with all the candidates for the Republican nomination. I I could live with any of them as the nominee. Because there's only one, one battle that needs to be won, and that's not against fellow conservatives. Which I want to, I want to address for a moment. Before I go back to what I was going to talk to you about, there is a a real division among conservatives with regard to uh, the uh, supporting Ukraine. There are good people on both sides, but it appears that some on the anti-funding Ukraine side have uh, begun to attack Republicans who want to fund Ukraine in its battle to survive as an independent state. That's not right. That's really bad. Okay, I I will have more to say on that in the forthcoming days and weeks. But uh, if we start to have a circle firing squad in conservatism, then the country is doomed. You can be for aiding Ukraine and be a terrific conservative. You could be not for aiding Ukraine and be a terrific conservative. I am for aiding Ukraine. I know how many terrific conservatives don't agree. Unfortunately, the argument that it's a corrupt government doesn't strike me as particularly effective. 37,000 Americans died for a very corrupt government in South Korea in the 1950s. That, uh, there's another reason I don't find that argument persuasive. We have a corrupt government, too. So if America were invaded, should nobody come to our aid because we have a corrupt government? It's hard for me to believe that there's more corruption in Ukraine than in the United States at this time with what has been done to the FBI, the CIA, the EPA, every federal agency. The jailing, I mean, I have had a man on now three times from a, a jail in in Washington, D.C., he hasn't even had a bail hearing for showing up in the Capitol on January 6th. He would have been treated uh, with with more legal decency had he been accused of a grand larceny. Probably, certainly, of hit and run, maybe even of murder. We have political prisoners So the argument that uh, Ukraine has corruption in its government, hmm. it's hard, as I said, to imagine that it is greater than the corruption that the Democrats have 
constituted in the American government. We uh, promised Ukraine, the whole West did, that if you give up your nuclear weapons, we will defend you if you're attacked. I haven't heard a single conservative against aiding Ukraine who has dealt with that issue. Is that is that insignificant? Does it mean a damn thing if America guarantees your security? Okay, just... Uh, I had to make that aside. I was on a British podcast last night, midnight my time, uh, 8 or 9 a.m. British time. It's on for an hour. And uh, he, uh, he, he kept raising this issue of the conservatives in America who are attacking conservatives who are for aiding Ukraine. The argument that we don't care about the southern border, but we care about Ukraine's borders. My my friend, whom I deeply admire, Tucker Carlson, makes that argument all the time. It's a non sequitur. The reason that this government in the United States doesn't care about the southern border has nothing to do with Ukraine. It didn't care about the southern border before the invasion, and it doesn't care about the southern border after the invasion. If we didn't aid Ukraine, would we would be actually actually uh, stopping the flow of millions of illegal immigrants? Of course not. So it has nothing to do with Ukraine. Nothing. It's just an emotional argument. We care about Ukraine's borders, but not um, but not America's borders. That's true. That 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 is true. But it's irrelevant because. This government doesn't care about America's borders, whether or not it cares about Ukraine's borders. If it stopped aiding Ukraine, would it would it stop the flow of immigrants? Of course not. So what does the argument mean? But I, it's okay. I my respect for Tucker Carlson is immense, and and there are others for whom I have tremendous respect who hold this position. The thought that I would attack them as not real conservatives or, or whatever, as is now being done by some to uh, those of us who are for the aid to Ukraine, this only ensures that the Democrats will win. That is all it will do. It's not going to change any of our minds. Well, it, it, all, it helps me you know I philosophize a great deal. I think about life a lot. It helps a great deal to go into life knowing that the human being is a profoundly flawed creature. So then you're, you're not constantly disappointed. Somebody uh, wrote to me for my fireside chat that I do every week on PragerU.com. I've done now about 280 of them. I missed one week because I had COVID and it wasn't fair to the, to the staff to come in. I, They would have done it, but it was PragerU policy that if you had COVID, you had to remain at home. And even though I do it at home, they didn't come to my home. So I only missed one out of, it, through the entire lockdown. We all got together every week and did the, the fireside chat. You would love it, by the way. You should you should definitely watch it at PragerU.com, the fireside chat that I do every week. And I got a question from somebody who was uh, cheated out of money by, uh, I don't know, a partner or a spouse. I don't, I don't remember which. It doesn't matter. Said, I've, I've lost... How do I not lose faith in humanity and even in God? I said, "Well, you went into the you went into life with this naive belief that people are basically good. Because I know that human nature is not basically good, I celebrate the honest and the decent. I am not shocked and disappointed by the dishonest and indecent." That is a huge huge help. It's in my book on happiness. 
I am I walk through life pleasantly surprised, not disappointed. That's a big difference. It's the importance of having a realistic view of humans. Anyway, and, and as regards God, what is what does that have to do with it? The amount of evil in the world historically? Somewhat of a bigger challenge than you being cheated out of money. And uh, nevertheless, of course there's a God. This did, did not come about by itself. Every day when I pass a mirror, I still can't believe it. It's me! I'm looking back at myself. I never thought I'd be this fit again, but 42 pounds ago, I decided to take control of my health. And with the help of my PhD weight loss and nutrition, I'm so glad I did. The program is simple. Dr. Ashley Lucas and her amazing team customize a plan for your body to make it simple. They even provide 80% of your food at no additional cost. They treat your entire person as one. Dr. Ashley believes that all change starts with the mind. She'll help you to change your behavior when it comes to food and think differently about food so you'll never gain the weight back. Give them a call right now at 864-644-1900 and they can answer all your questions. If I can do it, you can do it. You better stop the thing. Okay, let's uh, go to uh, some of your calls. Scranton, Pennsylvania, and Bob. Hello, Bob. Hi, Dennis. I'd like to get your thought or your opinion on um, the reason why we're possibly funding uh, Ukraine is because of all the chatter and talk about the bioweapons labs that the government owns in Ukraine. Yeah, they probably exist. I don't know what that has to do about not funding Ukraine. Uh, that was invaded by Russia. What does one have to do with the other? Well, the only thought that I have, and I don't have a real solid opinion on it, is that we keep trying to protect the, what is there. Like, I don't know to keep it secret. Uh, well, let or, us say, let us I, say, there weren't bio labs. Would you be for aiding Ukraine then? I'm still for aiding Ukraine. Oh, you still are. Yeah. I, I believe yeah. that there are I bio am. labs. Just... Uh, the, the the amount of corruption in the American government is very deep. I believe that there are probably bioweapons labs there. I have no proof. I I would say I I believe it, but I do not know it, and I would never say that I know it. However, it has yeah. no effect on me on whether or not we honor our commitment that we made to Ukraine if you give up your nuclear weapons, which they had after the fall of the Soviet Union, then we will protect you if you're invaded. Every conservative who is against aiding Ukraine uh, uh, believes that that, uh, that oath taken by the United States is uh, worthless. I, don't, I think most of them don't even know we, uh, we gave that guarantee, and they should know it. Before you oppose something or oppose something, you should try to know as much as you can. I'd like to have an answer to that. Give up your nuclear weapons, and we will protect you if you're invaded. By the way, if it's for bioweapons, why, why are Sweden and Finland neutral countries asking to join NATO? Why are they so scared of Russia? They don't have bioweapon labs in, in Ukraine. They're not as corrupt as the Biden administration. Why is virtually every West European country doing something to aid? Not, not nearly enough, because they used the American taxpayer to cover their defense obligations since World War II. Europeans have very little to give to Ukraine in terms of armaments because they were too busy spending their money on social programs and boasting how America was wasting its money on defense. And now that they need defense, they have nothing or close to nothing. Remember how the uh, left uh, uh, ridiculed Donald Trump 
for constantly saying, hey, wait, you're in NATO? Why don't you live up to your NATO obligations? They said he was ripping apart NATO. Maybe the NATO members were ripping apart NATO because they did nothing. Okay, let's go to Chicago and Kurt. Hello, Kurt. Hello, Dennis. Uh, I usually always agree with you, but I look at this situation and it frightens me. This president has gutted our military. We have terrible generals in charge. Our, we're not getting enough new troops. We've gotten rid of our oil reserves are depleted. We're not drilling anymore. And now we're giving away all our weapons to Ukraine. We can't supply. We can't remake them fast enough. And we're headed into World War Three. And I, I, I don't see any logic in doing that, especially with this president. So uh, everything you said about what he has done about gutting the military uh, is accurate. Every Everything and about depleting our ability uh, to have our own uh, uh, energy reserves, is everything you said is correct. So if Donald Trump were president... And he and none of that had been done. Would you have been for aiding Ukraine? Yes. Okay. All right. You make sense. It's a very tough issue. It's a very tough issue. I think that we are more likely to have. I think we are as likely. I wouldn't say more likely. I don't know uh, what World War Three would entail. I do know, though, that doing nothing when a nuclear power takes over a non-nuclear power, and Ukraine is a big state, if that doesn't send the message that we are, we have abandoned our commitment to uh, territorial integrity, then I don't know what it does say, and clearly I would believe China would invade Taiwan. And at some point, you would then have to say, mm, we, ha- we have to stop this. But at that point, it's, it's a much greater cost. There are bad actors on this planet, really bad. Putin and Xi are two of them. Really, really bad. For the sake of the American consumer paying low prices... We have enriched one of the most vile forces in human history, the Chinese Communist Party. Its record of genocide has not been duplicated. It slaughtered 60 million plus of its own people and celebrates the man who did it. Big picture of the monster Mao in the great people's hall. Most Chinese think Mao is great. That's the moral level of China. So uh, the human condition is a problematic one. If the Europeans had lived up to their signed promises of spending a certain percent of their GDP on, on, on weapons, on military, this would not be nearly the problem that it is. We'll be back in a moment. The Dennis Prager Show. COVIDtaxrelief.org got a small retail business almost $80,000. COVIDtaxrelief.org got a manufacturing business nearly $250,000. And COVIDtaxrelief.org just got a large distribution business almost $900,000. If you run a business, church, or nonprofit and paid your employees through all or part of the pandemic, you could qualify for up to $26,000 per employee through the government's CARES Act. But beware of clickbait or pay up front companies that make you do the work and take a huge percentage of your refund. COVIDtaxrelief.org receives a low, reasonable commission only after you receive your refund. And with 300 CPAs and tax experts, no one is better at getting you the maximum benefit than COVIDtaxrelief.org. Visit COVIDtaxrelief.org now because this plan expires soon. That's COVIDtaxrelief.org, COVIDtaxrelief.org. Refund examples are not a guarantee and not all businesses qualify. Hi, everybody. 
amazing thing, good thing about live radio is things happen in real time. So we might as well talk about Ukraine again. There are good people on both sides of this issue. If the, uh, if the conservatives break up over Ukraine, there will be a victory for Putin and a victory for Biden and the left. If you love this country, don't attack fellow conservatives with whom you differ on this issue. Uh, we can differ. Literally, God knows who's right. My belief is that if Donald Trump were president, he would not have watched Putin take over Ukraine. I will verify that with Seb Gorka. And, uh, because he, uh, he just spoke to the president yesterday on his uh, program. Of course, if he were president, I don't believe Putin would have invaded. When you have a wimp as the president of the United States, then it invites bullies. Weakness invites bullies. It's true on playgrounds, and it's true in the world. Uh, Steve in Fairfax, Virginia, hello. Hey, Dennis, great talking with you. I uh, agree with your point on uh, Trump's uh, likely actions, uh, but I'm, I've been a Ukraine supporter, obviously conservative. Uh, I'm familiar with the 2014 history versed on Russia, World War II, uh, Sevastopol, that, that old history and, and how Putin views that, uh, a comparison of uh, Russia's Monroe Doctrine on uh, exerting its uh, interest in its uh, periphery areas, uh, the, the nation of Georgia and Mold- and uh, Transnistria and all of that. Uh, but, uh, but I think uh, we might be making a mistake by uh, telling ourselves what will China think if we let uh, if we achieve a negotiated settlement with Putin. Uh, oh, I wa- oh, 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 I want a negotiated settlement with Putin. I want it tomorrow. I ache for it. Would that be uh, crime? This for an example, without yes, I, 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 I and would com- Russian yes, territory. I, I would compromise in some way, uh, even on that. I don't. I don't want Great. this to I, continue. Yeah. Uh, uh, you, Ukraine can hold its head up high. What it has done even if it compromises on certain uh, areas of, where there's a Russian majority, I'm not happy about it. Uh, maybe part of the agreement would be that the people in that area in, in, in three years can vote on whether they wish to be part of Russia. An internationally verified election to, to keep it as honest as possible, which means you don't allow Democrats in, into the process. And <laughs> right. uh, and uh, th- that something like that, he, by, uh, Putin, the monster, has to save face. Uh, Agree. Uh, and uh, see, I don't think emotionally. I hate the man. I hope he dies tomorrow. But what I hope and what I think have nothing to do with one another. Nothing. So, yes, you and I are, uh, are, are kindred spirits on this, and I thank you. Thank you for the call. Uh, okay, a lot of you have uh, other views, which is fine. Okay, including uh, Walt in Whittier, California. Hello, Walt. Um, hello, Dennis. Uh, uh, thank you for taking my call. Well, you differ with me. You get on first. <laughs> uh, I differ with you. Okay. <laughs> right. Um, well, uh, the re- and, and by the way, uh, as I, I told the call screener that I <clears throat> actually probably agree with you 98 percent of the time but i differ with you on this one because um putin vladimir putin is not really at war with ukraine he's at war with the united states and nato and he didn't invade first Uh, after we launched the coup in 2014 the ukrainian uh government um invaded or launched an attack against the um i guess native russian speakers in uh, the donbass region and um it's a fact that well over 14 15 thousand people were killed with the attacks and bombings on the various uh cities and towns in the donbass um 
Well, yeah. he, he has gone way beyond the Donbass region, obviously. Uh, uh, anyway, really. hold on, hold on. I'll, I'll uh, well, he's, he's bombing Kiev. Uh, he's sending missiles to a lot of cities. Yeah, that's what we do at PragerU. I'm going to go back to Walt in a moment. I, I do remind you that March is fundraising month for PragerU, Prager University. We have, uh, we have a billion views a year, and it's verified that over half of those viewers are under the age of 35 years, which is a remarkable thing because we have to touch the next generation. Everything we do is free, so if we don't raise funds, we don't produce what we do. And I have uh, on video and audio the chief development officer, men in charge of all the development, the fundraising for PragerU. He is David Prager. Yes, he is my son. I should I add, uh, Sean has the uh, kind of applause on him. It's giving Sean a great deal of joy. The more applause that I got growing up, so that's you know, nice to Yes, there you go. Uh, I, I just, in all seriousness, because my son and I joke around a great deal, but in all seriousness, I just want all those listening to know I do not do any hiring or firing at PragerU, none. Uh, David has been uh, indispensable to the growth of PragerU. He's extremely gifted in, in the area that he works. I'll just leave it at that, lest I embarrass you. So, David, uh, this uh, you just told me right before we went on, I did not know this, that whatever people give to PragerU this month will be matched. Can you explain that? Sure. So we have a matching campaign a few times a year. Our first campaign is in March, where all donations up to $2 million will, in fact, be matched. I'll mention the donate website as well as the phone number now and then at the end. Right. I'll try to make the case in between. Uh, the phone number is 833-772-4378. And then the website is donate.prageru.com. You can go there if you can. Remember, donate dot pragerucom slash March Match 23. Donate pragerucom slash March Match 23. A lot of people ask us, well, why don't you just do a match, a bang out match at the end of the year? And I'll say two reasons. Number one, the more gifts that we can get in earlier in the year, the easier it is for us to budget what our year will look like financially. Obviously, this is a challenging year. Uh, we've done a great job, our team, of ensuring that a large percentage of our funds not only come from major donors, but smaller donors as well. And due to the economy, of course, people have less and less uh, funds uh, to or dispensable income to work with. So our hope is that everyone can participate. You obviously want to do it when it's urgent. Obviously, we can talk about the urgency of the moment, uh, but urgent now that you can double your impact. When you gave this donate uh, uh, URL, can people just go to PragerU and donate? It, it, sure. Okay. And then go PragerU and, and yeah, find good. the donate I button. think that's we'll, a lot we'll easier. We'll make sure. Yeah, and we'll make sure that if you donate the much of more. Good. Of okay. Mark, so just, just will folks, be go to PragerU.com. So I don't think people realize how much product, so to speak, we put out. Why don't you, why don't you address that for a moment? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'll give, I know a lot of people, a lot of your listeners that, of course, know the history of PragerU, but I'll give the very quick background. We're used to talking in five-minute bites, but I'll make it faster. Uh, so PragerU was founded to combat the left. We know that the left has been uh, winning, uh, dominating academically in media, in Hollywood, uh, culturally for several generations. At the time that it was started with you and Alan, uh, the idea was to try to become the anti-university, to teach what isn't taught. That was the initial tagline. Give us five minutes, we'll give you a semester with your, of course, gift, ability, Dad, to take complicated concepts, American values, capitalism over socialism, what have you, and make them into bite-sized ideas and give them the millennial attention span of five minutes. What our goal was always was to, number one, reach a young audience. You touched on this earlier, was to reach 60% of our audience under 34. We hit that once we started producing one five-minute video a week. But it became very clear that to keep that young audience, we had to market ourselves on all social media channels, number one. And number two, we also realized that the left was getting involved in far more than simply uh, colleges, right? They were in Hollywood. We've learned in 2020 that they were involved as well 
in kids content and then Frager you kids was born so what started as a one trick pony the five minute videos that were released every week has now expanded into 16 different shows so we are an honest to goodness channel and we are competing against the likes of Disney Plus and PBS Kids. We all know the, 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 the indoctrination that they put out there. We have to counter that. And as you said, Dad, it's free, but we can't stop regardless of the economy. We need to keep growing. PBS Kids isn't gonna stop because we're at a bad economy. We're not gonna stop there either. Just to give you a couple of senses, a, a sense of how we know things are working is number one, uh, we put out surveys uh, to ask people what's the impact of this work. 70% of respondents said that their mind was changed on at least one video. We know, of course, we've been dealing between YouTube and Facebook and Instagram, and TikTok, the level of um, censorship. We were the first to bring about censorship and talk about censorship via YouTube. We deal with that. Of course, you and Marissa a few weeks ago talked about NewsGuard. Why would they want to censor us if we're not impactful? We get attacked constantly by places like uh, by places like Vice and the New York Times talking about our impact. These places would not be scared of us if we weren't making major inroads. And I'll just say this, a lot of your uh, followers are radio listeners, uh, obviously. Um, they need to know that what's great, what should give us hope is number one, our young personalities that are echoing the values that you've stressed your whole life about first personal responsibility, about the uh, exception that is America. Uh, they're as young as 20 with CJ, Amala, and Aldo. Uh, they're getting millions of views on a daily basis, reaching an every younger audience. And this is what's incredible. We're making these people stars. It used to be Hollywood that created stars, and they would only create stars that parroted their values. That's completely changing now. Hmm. That's that, that the internet That's has right. inverted. The internet has made it where we create stars. The biggest personality on Instagram has now a big, as big a following on, on, on the internet. Uh, on, on, as in Hollywood, excuse me. And that's what people need to know. We have the ability to All right, fight so, in the culture. Okay, this has been a terrific overview. Again, okay. just go, folks, please, to PragerU.com. PragerU.com. And, and uh, your gift will be matched. David, uh, I don't know how to say goodbye. <laughs> it's my son, and I love him. Well, give me a call after the show. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Dad. Love you. Just when you thought it couldn't get any better, Mike Lindell with MyPillow is launching the MyPillow 2.0. When Mike invented MyPillow, it had everything you could ever want in a pillow. Now, nearly 20 years later, he discovered a new technology that makes it even better. The MyPillow 2.0 has the patented adjustable fill of the original MyPillow, and now with a brand new fabric that is made with a temperature-regulating thread. The MyPillow 2.0 is the softest, smoothest, and coolest pillow you'll ever own. For my listeners, the MyPillow 2.0 is buy one, get one free offer with promo code Prager. MyPillow 2.0 temperature regulating technology is 100% made in the USA and comes with a 10-year warranty and a 60-day money-back guarantee. Just go to MyPillow.com and click on the radio listeners square to the buy one, get one free offer. Enter promo code Prager or call 800-761-6302 to get your MyPillow 2.0 now. You are... We go back to the Ukraine issue. My biggest point is that if conservatives divide over this, it, it is the end of the United States as we know it. And that is my bigger point. I support aiding Ukraine for many reasons. And I, I hear the opposition, including Walt in Whittier, California. Walt, the 14,000 that you mentioned were not all Russians. That was the total number of people killed in a sort of civil strife between Russians and Ukrainians in the Donbass region. 10,000 of the dead were soldiers. So it's just, it, it's just worth noting. Also, what do you say about the agreement that if Ukraine gives up nuclear weapons, we will protect its sovereignty? Well, the um, answer to that, and by the way, I've never called into a radio show, and I'm really nervous. But, I understand. Um, well, you're doing very well. Let me just salute you. Um, thank you. Um, in that agreement, um, the United States and NATO agreed to not go further east and 
to threaten Russia with NATO for, uh, NATO forces and missiles on on their on their border. Um, you know the historical uh, reality is you know, Napoleon attacked from the west, Hitler attacked from the west, and now, quite frankly, the United States and NATO are attacking from the west. Because he because he invaded Ukraine, there was no there was no war. No, no, no. no. Yes, well, yes, here, that's the reason. Why no. are why are Sweden and Finland and Latvia and Estonia and Lithuania so afraid? I don't know. Oh, okay. Well, I, it's, I don't it's something, believe. It's something... I don't believe he. I don't believe he wishes to um, resurrect the Soviet Union. Okay. Okay. I, I do. All right. Look. It's, it's the final segment of the hour, so forgive me. We should deal with this a lot because um, the, the biggest reason is the division among conservatives, which doesn't bother me unless it hurts the conservative movement. And then, then it's taps for the United States of America. I am for aiding Ukraine, but I, I far more fear the left in the United States than I do Putin. And you can't say because Biden is so despicable that you're against aiding Ukraine. Life doesn't always give you the choice you want. I don't like being on the same side of Biden either. That's not the issue, though. We'll return. Hello, everybody. I'm Dennis Prager. One of the great and unique aspects of live radio, and it's one of the last media of live and interaction with people, is the spontaneity of topics that can occur. And this is an example. I had planned many other things, but I feel that there's an urgency to address two issues, maybe of equal importance, or maybe the first one is more important even. If there's going to be a a breach in the conservative movement because of the division over aiding Ukraine, it is the end of the United States as we know it. The only possible way to save this country from the leftist attempt to undo the country and the West generally, uh, is for conservatives to be united, not in, not in, uh, on every issue, I don't care, on defeating the left. But if, uh, if conservatives who are against aiding Ukraine will start labeling conservatives who are for Ukraine with various labels, including Rhino, it's taps for the United States. Have I lost any respect for Tucker Carlson? Of course not. I uh, On this issue, I always used to say, it's interesting, when people would say, I agree with you 99% of the time, so I would always try to guess what was the 1%. And generally, the 1% was when I would say I would prefer that if I, when, when my kids were teenagers... I would prefer that they smoked cigarettes or cigars uh, to marijuana. I I, I emphatically hold that position today. And a lot of people said, oh, no, marijuana is not as dangerous as tobacco, as if the only issue was the, the, the health issue, not the brain issue. And development issue and the addiction issue, etc. Can you get addicted to cigarettes? Of course. Who cares? The problem is not the addiction. The problem is the danger of cigarette smoking to one's lungs. Anyway, that was one example, and it's not like this one. This is the, I guess, the biggest difference that I probably have with. Uh, many members of my listening audience, is the Ukraine issue. And it's only become clear to me in the last couple of weeks 
I thought you, that conservatives were, were, for the most part, for resisting the Russian takeover of Ukraine and doing what America has done in the past, has come to the aid of smaller states being gobbled up by larger regressive states. But I, I w- I'm wrong. And that's okay. We differ, we differ. I still think Tucker Carlson is magnificent. I hope whatever positive feelings you have toward me prevail. But as you probably know, I have never aimed to be liked. I have only aimed to do what I believe is right, what I believe truth and morality demand that I do. So I live with the consequences of it. But I the arguments are sometimes not valid, sometimes ignore the other arguments like our promise to come to Ukraine's aid if it's invaded, if they give up their nuclear weapons, and they did. The more I read about the 2014, or was it 2014? Let me get the, uh, I think it was 2014. Yeah, the removal of Yanukovych, the pro-Russian uh, president of Ukraine, uh, the less I see it as an American coup and the more I see it as the result of internal Ukrainian uh, issues. For example, there were massive protests against his signing an agreement with Russia. It was very unpopular uh, with the vast majority of Ukrainians and in the, and in the Ukrainian parliament. And so uh, there were so many protests, the man actually left the capital. And while he left, they declared that he was no longer president. That's what's called a coup. Whether it was legal or a coup, I don't know. I, I will do further investigation of it. I don't know why the United States is regarded as having organized it or done it. How, how does the U.S. manipulate the Ukrainian parliament, and did it even need to? It wasn't as if his removal was not popular among parliamentarians or the Ukrainian people. But uh, then Russia invaded uh, the Crimean region, the Donbass region, and then ensued a war. And I don't see how those things argue uh, for not coming to the aid of Ukraine. It's, it's, a, it's not like it's only an issue over the Donbass region, the attacks on Kiev with missiles and, and and other ways of attacking other parts of Ukraine. I am not... Let me put it to you this way. I said this during the Trump era, and any of you who have listened to me know I think he was one of the greatest presidents in the history of the country. I would put him in the top five... Certainly, the outside of Reagan, the greatest president of my lifetime, and s- not inferior to uh, Reagan. But I always said that America first, I, I agree with, but not America only. America first is not the same as America only. It's like my family comes first, but I am not only concerned with my family. So that, uh, that's not the same thing. Uh, okay, let's, so, uh, all right. Well, I spoke to Walt last time, and he was very good. He, he said he was nervous, but he, was, he didn't betray it all, at all. He spoke very well. Okay, let's go to Phoenix, Arizona, and Robert. Hello, Robert. Hello, Dennis. How are you? I'm well, thank you. I would just uh, like to thank you for taking my call. I hope you know what, uh, what a special human being you are and how much we all outliers out here appreciate you. Mm, that's very thank kind. You. Thank you very much. So as relation to Ukraine, 
I have no problem in what we're doing in Ukraine. I think we should support them. But I wish we had a lot more oversight as far as where the money is going, because um, I can only imagine that, you know, how much of it's being siphoned off and put in personal accounts. So I just wish there was more oversight. Yes, I, I agree with you. I, I wish there were more oversight. There, I don't know how much there is. Uh, I have no trust in the Biden administration. We're in a very awful position of supporting a man that we have utter and total contempt for as a human and as a president. That's correct. Uh, Life doesn't give me choices I want all the time. (laughs) This This is not Donald Trump. And by the way, I think every conservative who is opposed to aiding Ukraine would would have to ask themselves, just as I have to challenge myself, if Donald Trump were aiding Ukraine, what would your position be then? In other words, how much is it Joe Biden, for whom you have legitimate contempt, and whom you don't trust whatsoever? I don't trust him at all, and I have total contempt for him and his administration. We have thugs running the White House. I I can't believe I'm saying it. I've never said it. I've been broadcasting 40 years. I thought Barack Obama was an awful president. I never spoke once like this about him, nor about Bill Clinton. We have thugs running the, the intelligence agencies. 51 of them signed a lie that the Biden notebook was Russian disinformation. They lied to the American people to get a Democrat elected. I know all this, and none of it has anything to do with whether or not we honor our agreement to Ukraine that we made when they gave up their nuclear weapons. We continue. I'm Dennis Prager. All right, everybody. Dennis Prager here. I have my friend and colleague, Sebastian Gorka, who, who was in the Trump administration and just yesterday had President Trump on his show. Before I ask you about that, I just want to tell you, Sebastian, what has been on my mind and what I've been talking about. Uh, As I said many times, good people can differ on the Ukraine issue. It's a a given to me. But I am now uh, hearing uh, and seeing a very different thing, that some uh, prominent conservatives are condemning the conservatives who were for supporting uh, for supporting uh, the war uh, effort in Ukraine as rhinos or other uh, other things. Do you have any thoughts on that? <laughs> yes, uh, I would say in that case they don't believe in the concept of America in 1776. If uh, a group of people fighting against a dictatorship, the usurpation of their freedoms was important in 1776, it's important for all Americans and patriots today. Let me just remind my fellow Americans who were born here, who aren't immigrants like me, if France, if Holland and Spain hadn't assisted the colonials, the founding fathers, the United States would not exist as a country today, would be part of the British Commonwealth. The idea that any conservative, any conservative can be on the side of a former KGB colonel who persecuted lovers of freedom, who persecuted Christians as part of his job in the state security committee of the Soviet Union is absolutely galling to me, Dennis. Okay, uh, listen, I, 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 you certainly, you have great uh, delivery and passion on this, which I salute, and I want to remind everybody, you can't get more pro-Trump or pro-MAGA than Sebastian Gorka. So the notion that people who are for aiding Ukraine are somehow, uh, listen, Candace Owens tweeted out that uh, you're a rhino, and I, I'm, I'm close to Candace. I was shocked. Anyone, any conservative, any Republican who supports uh, aiding the Ukraine is a Republican in name only. Uh, if this starts to happen, then we crack up as a conservative opposition to the left-wing takeover of the country, and we lose the country. So I, I, th- this is my first passion, that conservatives not have a civil war. 
Now, what what is your take, knowing the president far better than I do and yeah. far better than almost anybody listening, and having had him on your show yesterday, what do you think his take is on Ukraine? Well, I, I was very, very um, pleasantly surprised by what the president said. You can see the whole thing. He was on for almost 40 minutes. We have a brand new YouTube channel. Just look for my name, Sebastian Gorka, President Trump. uh, And you can see the whole interview, including we kept the conversation going through the commercial break. So it's it's unexpurgated. It's the the full discussion. He was adamant uh, on two things. Number one, What is happening in Ukraine is a tragedy. He went on and on to talk about the whole cities that have been leveled by the Russian forces. He he just talked about the the utter magnitude of destruction that that Putin has uh, executed against the people of Ukraine. And then secondly, and, you know, I'm always asked what would happen if if President Trump were in the White House again. He said, and this this was the title for our, our, our clip, Uh, this war would end in 24 hours if I were back in the White House. And I believe it. Let me just remind all those who who forgot or didn't pay attention. When we were in the White House, the Assad regime, the murderous Assad regime, decided to use chemical weapons again against civilians. President Trump didn't want to deploy the 82nd Airborne, didn't want to intervene on the ground, but he dropped 52 cruise missiles on that Syrian air base to send a message to Putin, to Kim, to Xi Jinping. You do not do this to innocent women and children. Uh, he sent a message to all dictators. Not only that, in Syria, he found 300 members, Russian members of the Wagner Group. These are Port Putin's mercenaries. When we found them destabilizing Syria... President Trump ordered the Pentagon to kill those Russian mercenaries. We killed 300 combat operators in Syria. Putin, Dennis, Putin didn't even have a press conference. That's how afraid of President Trump he is. When I asked Neil Ferguson, the great historian, a a year ago, do you think, or eight months ago, do you think that Putin would have invaded Ukraine if Donald Trump were president. And I give you my word of honor, I had no idea what he would answer. And Mm -hmm. there was not a nanosecond or maybe a nanosecond of space, and he said no. Period. Just no. But if he did... So one final question, because you are the Trump maven among the Salem hosts and indeed in the country, one of the greatest knowers of the president and what makes him tick if if he if putin had done what he did on uh on his watch you think he would have responded forcefully is that is that i want to i don't want to put any words in your mouth well i would have advised him as his strategist to immediately move troops to the polish ukrainian border to move troops to uh the Baltic states, we, we have to keep our word. We helped create NATO in 1949. We have an Article 5 commitment to our friends. Uh, we promise to protect them and they protect us. He would have drawn a line in the sand. And also he would have provided not pallets of cash like this insane senile old man in the White House is doing now so that he gets his 10 percent. He would have sent intelligence data target packets to Kiev to use to bleed the Russians so that they would win this war very rapidly. Not, not money, not American equipment, Soviet-era equipment, ammunition, and target packets so the Russians would be taught a lesson by the Ukrainians. Who, by the way, let's be clear here, the Ukrainians lost up to 8 million of their citizens under Stalin to the, during the Holomodor, who were starved to death by Moscow. They will fight, not to the last man, Dennis, they will fight to the last 12-year-old who has a sharpened stick. So if 1776 means something to you as a conservative, I'm sorry, Candace Owens, if it means something to you, so should the Ukrainians fighting for their liberty. I don't want to hear about the corrupt regime in Kiev, because guess what? The regime in Washington, D.C. is corrupt, starting with the president. That doesn't mean that Chinese tanks, for example, could roll roll down Pennsylvania Avenue. If the liberty of free people matters, so does the liberty of Ukrainians today. Period. End of story. And President Trump knows that. Sebastian, I thank you. 
you responded immediately. I know you're preparing for your terrific show, which follows mine on many of the same stations. Bless you, my friend. God bless you. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Hmm. I, I respect the conservatives who are opposed to aiding Ukraine. You need to respect us. The notion that there is something less conservative about a conservative who is supporting the uh, the uh, Ukrainian president, whether you like him, dislike him, think he's honest or corrupt, if corruption is our standard, we shouldn't pay taxes in the United States. It's the most corrupt government in the history of the United States. It's the first time we have political prisoners in the United States. When we went to war with 37,000 dead Americans in Korea, we supported a corrupt regime. Hi, everybody. I'm Dennis Prager. We'll return to the Ukraine after we visit the Middle East for a moment. You know, uh, just a personal note. I remember when I got a three-hour show. It was about 30 years ago. Maybe even... I don't know, actually longer than that. Almost all of my 40 years I've had three hours. And I remember asking Ray Bream, one of the greatest broadcasters in, in, in America and certainly in L.A., he used to have midnight to 5 a.m., five hours every night. <laughs> and, he, and I had nine to midnight one year, so I was right before him. And I said to him, I was in my 30s, and I said, you th- Ray, you, you think you think I'll have enough material for three hours a day? And all he did was laugh. <laughs> and he was right. I, I could fill six hours a day. Uh, it, it, there's so much. We'll get back to Ukraine and my bigger concern about a, a crack up within the conservative movement over this issue, which there shouldn't be. You're allowed to differ with one another and still understand the common enemy of the, what the left is doing to America. One of my favorite people is Ami Horowitz. I don't say that often, and Ami knows I'm looking straight at him. He knows I mean it. And it's not only because he smokes cigars, because in fact we differ on cigars. I prefer Nicaraguan and he prefers Cuban. Pick your communist. <laughs> That's basically what it comes down to. <laughs> Communists make better cigars. I don't know why, I know. but they just do. Isn't that funny? <laughs> it's the only thing they do well. <laughs> and baseball. And baseball. Well, they're all, but you get a lot from non-communists like Colombia. And, uh, well, Venezuela is heading. Uh, right. Right. Anyway, Ami makes one of, the mo- one of the most important things on the internet are Ami Horowitz's videos. It's up at PragerU, the latest. So you went uh, to visit Israeli Arabs. And what was the purpose? So, okay, you you hear a lot about um, Israeli Arabs are second class citizens. There's apartheid in Israel. Right now, even I bought into the narrative somewhat, in the sense that usually when I go and I shoot a video, it's very very rare. I don't know what the response I'm going to oh. get because I know I know the people, I know their mentality, right. I know how to draw out right. what what they're going to say and how to get them to say it. I know what it, my biggest my biggest superpower is I can get them to say the quiet part out loud. That's what I'm good at. So my assumption was that I was going to go to an Israeli Arab village and I was going to ask them, what's it like being here? They're going to say, it's terrible. We hate it. It's horrible. And then the punchline was going to be that, oh, by the way, if there's a land swap between Israel and the Palestinians, this village will become part of Palestine. They'll the response will go, no, 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 no. We want to stay in Israel undermining what we just heard. But that's not what I heard. That's not what the response was. The response was overwhelmingly, we love being Israeli citizens. We love it here. Is it perfect? No. But is it perfect for black people in America? Of course not. But it's better being a black American than being black anywhere else in the world. And it's better being an Israeli Arab than being an Arab anywhere else in the world. Overwhelmingly, that was the response that I got. Oh, so you say you went in not knowing what response you no, would get. No, in, in so, fact, I thought it was going to be the opposite. That that they would be thrilled to be part of a Palestinian state. They're no, pa- no, no, no. I knew they were no. I knew they were I thought they were going to, they were going to they were going to moan about being an Israeli, but when push came to shove and I said, "Would you rather be Palestinian?" They oh, would I say get no. it. I see. But they didn't even moan. No, no, they quite the opposite. 
Quite the opposite. You're right. I'm surprised too, to be honest. And and I the, thought the official doctrine was to bemoan being an Arab in Israel. So what it, this is very similar to being black in America in the sense that if you ask black leadership, what's it like for black people? They'll say it's terrible. We it's horrible for black people in America. But if you ask black people what it's like, like no, it's great here. What are you talking about? Right. Similarly, it, Israeli Arab leadership does the same thing. They moan and they complain about the, 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 the differences between Israel, Jews and, and Muslims. But when you ask the people on the street, they look at you like you're crazy. No, it's great here. You know, it's so interesting. So, look, data says a lot, right? Okay, you can, you, get as, you can get somewhat from talking to people, but it's anecdotal. But data says it all. And do you know that, for example, they look, well, they look there's a wage gap between Israeli Jews and Israeli Arabs. That's true. There's a wage gap. But guess what? The wage gap between Israeli Arabs and Israeli Jews is smaller than the wage gap between black Americans and white Americans. Wow. And by the way, if you want to say all difference, all disparity is discrimination, well, there's a wage gap between white Americans, a significant wage gap between white Americans and Asian Americans. Does that mean there's discrimination against white people? Is that what it is? Or could it be other factors that come into play? And you can see the video at PragerU.com. You can. Yes. Back in a moment. Hi, everybody. Serious thinker and and actor on the world stage in, in the media world is Ami Horowitz. He has gone all over the world to very, very difficult situations including crossing over, was it with Syrians, into Europe, into Greece? On a raft. On a raft. I mean, it's guts, and it was important. And uh, One of the d- dumber decisions I made. Well, it's a very tough call often between courage and dumb. That's true. If it works out, it's just courageous. That's true. If you'd have drowned, it would have been dumb <laughs> and courageous. <laughs> Thank God you didn't drown. But anyway... I mean, I wasn't braver than Biden. Okay, yeah. I mean, let's be honest. Right, you know, okay. We're talking about real bravery. That's such a good point. This video up at PragerU.com just went up today uh, with Ami Horowitz in an Arab village in Israel and asking them, as an American journalist, that's, that's the yeah. way you, def- you defined yourself, so how is it here? And it, you expected to hear, oh, we're second-class citizens. And th- they just basically say it's actually great even i believe the brainwashing yes that's the that's, thing that's, is that's that right. even i bought into the narrative yes that all they hate it they hate in israel right. they're prisoners right. apartheid right even i bought into that narrative that's very interesting and very important that you note it so anyway it's up at uh at dennis prager.com as as are many of your videos correct yeah or did i say dennis prager.com no at prager you.com no. So while we're at it, I have another conservative, Ami Horowitz, and I had no, I truly, you had no idea what the Arabs in Israel would answer you. I have, I had no idea what you would answer me. I did not know what your position is. If I know a person is a conservative, I, I have no idea whether they'll support or oppose the aid to Ukraine. What's your position? I, I think this is one of the easiest decisions for us to make. Russia is, if not our number one geopolitical foe, number two, right? Depending on how you, how you, what, what data, what metric you're using. Russia is actively working against American interests and has been for generations. To spend the 20 to $50 billion we're spending to use Ukrainian soldiers as a proxy for a battle against Russia, to degrade, to degrade Russia's economic status, its military status, for that amount of money. Keep in mind, let's put things in context. Yeah, 20 sounds like a lot of money. It is a lot of money. But in context of a trillion dollars we spend a year on defense. Which it's is a, a thousand billion dollars. It's a drop in the bucket. And we have done more with that. Look, we all, you and I both know that oftentimes we spend money on defense. And it's a waste of money, right? You've heard those, you know, the thousand dollar toilet seats, that kind of thing. This, there's nothing. And yes, some of that money, I'm sure, is going to line people, Ukrainian pockets. But you have to understand that's part of the, the bargain when we do spend any money anywhere, including here in America. But to use that kind of money to take a massive geopolitical foe essentially off the table, I don't know how we can spend money better than that. 
This is how one of the greatest you, mistakes right, so Russia's I, ever made. I, I, and we're exploiting, we, right. we have to exploit it. So I have a very, very delicate question. And again, I want to repeat over and over, conservatives cannot break up over the Ukraine issue. We can differ, doesn't matter to me, but we can't break up. How do you explain, from your perspective, the number of conservatives who would allow Russia to basically annex Ukraine? Well, okay, I'll take two things. One is, I don't want, even though I'm saying this is an obvious decision that we should make, it doesn't mean I don't understand the positions of those who say I don't want to do it, right? Because essentially they're saying, and the reason why they're saying is, look, we we spent too much money all around the world. Ultimately, the data shows we don't spend that much money all around the world, but they think we do because that's the narrative that they're told. I get that. But there has look, there's always been this this bone in the conservative body of isolationism. It's never served this country well. It never will serve this country well. I get the refl- again. I get why they want to do it. Why not spend? Why spend the money elsewhere? We can spend the money here. I get the argument. Now, ultimately, you, you're not taking a wide enough view of the world and how a, the having the, the institutions of democracy and the institutions of law that we have across the globe that we've built over the last hundred years has served us very, very well and continues to serve us well and will continue to serve us well. We make more money. We earn more money because we can trade abroad. That's being threatened when Russia says, I'm going to annex a neighbor, a a separate country that has been separate and independent for years and years and years. That threatens the order. I know conservatives have this problem with the order. I know they look at it and they say it's some kind of massive geopolitical plot. It really isn't. Do I love everything about the way the, our system is set up internationally? I don't, right? I don't like the elites around the world. I don't. And I get why conservatives don't like them. But you have to take a wider picture of how this affects us, how this helps us. And it, it, there's no question where I end up on this. Okay. I did not know what you would say. I I did not know what Sebastian Gorka would say when I asked him what does he think President Trump's position is. And he he said that Trump would have ended the war, in other words, intervened immediately and made sure that nothing happened. Look, the Russian army is laying laying in ruins. They will not be a a true foe on the battlefield for 30 years. They can't, they're not going to, it's going to take decades to recover from this. They are off, they are off the table. They are off the playing board. Do you think uh, this stalemate, which nobody, nobody expected, do you think it has affected the Chinese view of invading Taiwan? Okay, that was the other, that was the other part we didn't get to. China will not invade Taiwan. I'm, I'm saying that with, without any hesitation. China, because this, Taiwan would be a bigger deal than Ukraine. Taiwan's a far bigger thorn and far harder swallow for China. There's no way militarily won't, they won't do it because they know that now we had some backbone. Look, and by the way, I'm not a fan of Biden. You know that. I think his failures are, are, are legion. But I have to say, he's done a fine job with Ukraine. He's done fine. Could have been a little bit better here or there. Yes. But he stood up against the Russians and the Chinese took note. They said, even Joe Biden, who ran away with his tail between his legs in Afghanistan, realized when there's something that he understood to be a real, real importance for the United States, he will stand up to it. And, if, and he will absolutely stand up for Taiwan. We have, we have a defense agreement with Taiwan, which we don't have with Ukraine. And we still fund the Ukraine and their defense. So they know they, this... From an economic perspective, it will destroy them, and that matters to them most. Mm-hmm. And from a military perspective, it will degrade them, will destroy them, but it will degrade them significantly. Siami Horowitz's incredible video on this, his visit to an Arab village in Israel at PragerU.com. Thank you, Ami. Always a pleasure. Thank you. The Dennis Prager Show. Well, I really have an issue here. Every, every line of... Eight lines, it's a lot of lines coming into the show, and I'm reading the summaries. And every single one that is on Ukraine differs with me and is against supporting it. I'm, I'm going to read it, so please don't hang up because in the time remaining, I can't take a lot of calls, obviously. So here, Mark in Philadelphia, we just don't trust this government to mess things up in Ukraine. So that implies... And obviously, over the next weeks, we're going to talk about this a lot. That implies that if you did trust the government, if it was a Republican government that you trusted, then you would support aiding Ukraine. 
Otherwise, the argument doesn't mean anything. Even if you trust the government, you still not support supporting Ukraine. I, I put my loathing of this government into a compartment, and then I ask, what do we do about the Russian invasion of Ukraine? All right, let's see. Biden is lying. We need to get out of Ukraine. It is reckless and dangerous. Every, By the way, every one of your arguments, uh, those of you who are opposed to going into Ukraine, well, I'm opposed to America going into Ukraine. Nobody is for uh, sending troops. Uh, but even opposed to aiding them and they're dying in great numbers fighting the Russian invasion. And you support every single one of those arguments could have been given in the Korean War. I just, But nobody knows anything about the Korean War because it upsets both conservatives who are on the isolationist side and the leftists who would depict every American intervention as imperialist. It's amazing how people don't know about the Korean War. 37,000 Americans died there. God knows how many were terribly hurt, but who, who, who didn't die there. Every single one of these arguments, the South Korean government was corrupt, could have given that argument. I don't trust Truman. A Republican could have given that argument. So when is it proper for America to help people who are invaded? I admit that my commitment to religious values is a big part of my support. If you are given by God or by by your own work or both great power and and to stand by as a country is gobbled up, whether you like the country or not is not the issue, whether you like the government or not. Anyway, my bigger appeal is this. Don't start attacking the people you differ with if you're conservative. I have no desire nor inclination to attack those who oppose aid to Ukraine, and it should work in the opposite direction or the left wins. Dennis Prager here. Thanks for listening to the Daily Dennis Prager Podcast. To hear the entire three hours of my radio show, commercial-free, every single day, become a member of PragerTopia. You'll also get access to 15 years' worth of archives, as well as the daily show prep. Subscribe at PragerTopia.com.